Hey guys, Ron Bond, Bondo Build Construction here. Uh, today I want to show you how to put down some radiant tubing in a barn that we're working on. Um, we got spray foam in there. It's a 30 by 48 barn. And we're going to do um, three, three loops inside there. It's going to be run by one pump. Um, I'm just going to show you how we do it. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But I've been doing a lot of these barns. Um, I don't know, probably 50, 60 of them the same way and they work really good everybody really likes the radiant heat so stay with us it's gonna be good thanks for watching so this is the barn that we're doing guys um we're gonna pour the inside is 30 by 48 and then we're we're gonna pour this um little lean-to over here and that's uh 10 by 48 there's no heat in the lean-to part i got a pool there so they want to have uh, some concrete here so we're going to pour that, just pouring the concrete in there. We're going to leave the sun skirt board off so we can get the track buggy in there. We got the track buggy for tomorrow. We're going to pour this tomorrow. Today what we're doing is putting the radiant tubing in. And uh, we, if you've watched my videos before, we do a lot of spray foam in these things. So I had a spray foam guy come in and spray foam everything. Here's uh, we got a trench drain down the middle of it. We got an inch and a half of closed cell spray foam in here, so that's your uh, that's your vapor barrier as well as your insulation. Yesterday we came in here and put wire mesh down. Um, I like to run wire mesh because it gives you your pattern for your tubing. So these these grids are on six inch centers, so it's real easy when you're doing concrete. You want your tubing to be one foot on center. So with the six inch grids on the on the wire mesh, it makes it real easy. And we just tie, tie it down to the wire mesh. Real easy how we do it. It's kind of, you know, you gotta bend over a lot to do it. It's kind of, that's the only thing that sucks, but. So here it is. I'm gonna try to show you. This barn is, uh, it's 48 by, 48 by 30, so it's, going to be less than 1500 feet you're going to have a foot of tubing per square foot of building on these concrete ones that's you know roughly so it's going to be less than 1500 feet so i'm going to run three loops in here because i run my tubing at 500 feet maximum so i can be in here probably 450 feet or so each loop three loops i'm going to run it lengthwise um, I just got these, we take these conduits, these are three quarter inch conduits, electrical conduits, just make up a little thing to hold them in place temporarily, and once we get the concrete in here, we'll pull them two by fours out. That just protects the tubing where it comes up out of the floor. We use a, obviously, we use an oxygen barrier tubing. I get this tubing at Peck Supply, or uh, it's actually called Supply House now. I buy it in a thousand foot rolls and it's like um, right around $230 a roll. But you want to make sure you use oxygen barrier tubing, PAX tubing, oxygen barrier. Don't use the, the regular plumbing kind, it's got to be the oxygen barrier. So that's what we got starting out here. I'm going to try to get some footage of us tying this tubing. And like I said, I'm going to divide this barn into three pieces because it's going to be right around less, less than 1500 feet. I'm going to run my 500 foot loop. So as you can imagine taking this barn and dividing it lengthwise into three sections. So each section is going to be 10 feet wide. So I'll go along and figure out where my tubing's got to be and then I'll show you how we lay it out. So I painted some lines on the floor here. This is going to be one section of tubing. This section here, I move these down. This will be the second section, which is going to go across the drain. And then that would be the third section. Each section is 10 feet, so that's going to give us even amount of tubing here, so that when you lay out the tubing, your, your loops are all exactly the same length. We're going to come out of this header. Keep it so guys, I'm just going to talk you through here what, what we're doing just to help you out. Um, as I mentioned before, we buy this tubing in a thousand foot roll. 
So I didn't start taping until we got to the second zone here. Or not zone, but the second loop. And uh, pretty much right here I'm starting with a thousand foot roll. So that's how big a thousand foot roll is. It's kind of heavy, but um, it's, it's, I just like to roll it out like that. I'll just lay it right on the ground and roll it. And some people use tubing rollers to unroll their tubing, but I think these thousand footers just set them on the ground like that and roll them along. Um, and these guys are tying this tubing every three feet. So being uh, the grid six inches on center for your wire mesh, just count six of them and you got three feet. And once you establish your three foot marks all the way across the building, just follow that all the way across the entire building so you're not trying to sit there and figure out where to tie it. You just look look where your last loop was and tie it right there. It goes a lot faster. And uh, yeah, we're just, just roll this thing right out. And uh, it's a lot easier to go the length of these buildings that are these rectangular buildings. It's a lot easier if you can start your uh, headers somewhere in the, the center of the front or the back and uh, roll it right out lengthwise because you got less bends. If you'd roll the tubing sideways, you'd have a lot more turns. And uh, so, like I said, it's just, just a lot easier to divide your building up lengthwise. This here, as I mentioned before, is a 30 by 48 building, so we just divide it into three pieces. So if you watch how I turn the corner here, I'm just kind of rolling the roll right around with myself. I'm not flipping the roll over or nothing. Just got to kind of turn the corner with it. If you put, start pulling it out the side of the roll, it's going to end up all looped up. And it's going to, because of the memory of the roll, it's, it's not going to lay right. And it's going to get all twisted. So you want this tubing really flat. You don't, Once it starts to get tangled up, it's a mess. So see how I'm just rolling it right out even? And guys are right there to tie it down. You'll know if you flip it wrong, it, it won't lay right. So just got to get the hang of how to turn the corners with the roll. It's not hard once you figure it out. It's just You just don't want to flip that roll over the wrong way. It'll give you nightmares. And uh, the more people you have to tie this down, the better it is, because it is, it is hard on the back. And a lot of times when we're rolling tubing, it's going to be the day before we pour concrete. So, um, you know, I've done it with just one or two guys, and it really, it sucks, because you're bent right over there tying all those ties. So, you know, you can get a couple kids to help you. You know, that's usually what we do. I got my son here helping me and another guy Evans over here helping me um, get those young guys with this their backs won't get sore and uh, like I said the more the better on it and those little you need those little twisty tools you can buy them right at Lowe's and it, it goes pretty good here, here's a I'm just speeding up the video because it's pretty boring watching us tie this down but if you see how we're laying it right on the painted lines. I kind of did that just to show in the video. Normally I don't even paint lines on the floor, but we do so much of this. If you're new to it, it'll help you. Just paint your lines on the floor where you want it. You could even paint lines where you want to tie it. Just give yourself an idea. Right here, we sped by it pretty quick, but we went around the drain a little bit. We didn't... I didn't want the tubing right up near the edge of the drain, so it kind of snaked out around it. And then at, if you watch to the end of the video, you'll see these holes right there. There's a couple big holes that the customer wanted to lift. So we didn't we didn't run the tubing where the lift legs are going to be because uh, you don't want um, to drill into the tubing, obviously. So we just snaked right around it. The customer dug out. A couple big holes right where he wanted his lift I told him to get some good pictures of it so that when he goes to put his lift in he's confident that he's not gonna hit the tubing so we just ended our middle our middle loop there and I just popped it up through the header so this is our last run so we've got you know two-thirds of the barn done we've got 20 feet of the 30 feet 
And here we go, just finishing up the last 10 foot area. And then that's just gonna run right up into the header. Um, towards the end here, if you look close, you'll notice that I tightened up one of the loops because what's the most important thing with this tubing that you gotta remember is keep the loops the same length as, as much as you can. Keep the loops as close as you can. So by starting in the middle of this building and dividing it in three pieces, these loops are going to be really close to the same length. And water likes to flow, you know, it's thermodynamics. Water will flow even if your loops are all the same length. So you won't need any crazy headers or anything. So what I mean by crazy headers is those real fancy expensive headers that got the temperature controls on them and uh, flow control valves on them and everything. If this tubing's all the same length, you're not going to need any kind of fancy header. You can just grab a PEX to copper header, one of those copper headers. You can buy them at Supply House, they're real cheap. And uh, just hook your tubing right up to it. You're not going to need um, your balancing valves or anything because all your tubing's the same length. Now, contrary to that, if you had run the tubing, and let's say you were running 300 foot loops and you ended your ended your building and you only had say a 150 or 200 foot loop at the end then that's not going to flow right so that's where the fancier headers come in with the balance and valves and all that you could throttle down that smaller zone so it didn't gobble up all the heat because that smaller loop is going to flow easier have less resistance to flow which is head pressure and more water is going to travel through that so to avoid all that just make sure your tubing's all the same length it's, it's, it's very important even if you got to put an extra run in there like if you look close right here you can see we tightened up a little bit right there so we we actually spaced a couple tubes like six inches apart here just so that we'd have the right length tubing on that and that's not going to amount to anything inside that slab. It's not going to be a hot spot or anything like that. You're not ever going to know it's there. It just keeps that tube in the same length. I can't stress to you how important that is um, the way I do it. Because I keep radiant systems very simple. And if, if You can complicate this if you want to and spend a lot of money. But we keep it real simple. I mean, this, this is really easy to do guys um i can't tell you how easy it is once you get the hang of it and if you do it like this you know divide your buildings lengthwise keep your tubing 500 feet or less everybody's going to tell you that's too long you got to do 300 footers i've done it both ways i've never seen a difference in the way they perform as long as you got a good pump a double a Taco 009 pump will push 500 foot loops all day long. Um, you know, you could run five or six of them in one zone. This barn is all one zone, so we got three 500, uh, less than 500 foot loops. It's only going to need one Taco 009 pump to push it, and uh, you can heat it with anything you want. You could use um, propane. You could use wood boiler. You could use we did one out of, with an oil water heater. Now, water heaters work really good for radiant heat systems because when the water comes back to the water heater, a water heater is designed to have wa cold water dumped into it. So, you know, if you're starting up your heating system in the beginning of the year and uh, your floor is ice cold, that water heater doesn't care. You can dump that ice cold water right into it and they're designed to do that and if you get these new new water heaters they got stainless steel tanks in them and they're really nice systems but we did a house with a oil fired water heater one time did it just like this and the customer only burns one tank of oil a year which is pretty impressive so i hope this video helped you if you like this kind of stuff go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you would and the bell notification and uh, keep watching my videos thanks for the support one foot on center when you tie this tubing we like to tie it every three feet so you can see the tie
There's one. They're just little, uh, they look like bread ties, but they're ties you can get. At, you can get them at Lowe's. They're actually uh, rebar ties. But we like to tie them every three feet. So there's a tie, and count two, four, six, and there's another tie. And once you establish where you're going to tie it, run them ties all the way across the floor. As you can see, we followed it all the way down through. All the way down across the floor. Just like that. This is how you come up into the... Into it. Your manifold's going to be there. The customer is going to have a lift in this building, so we dug out some holes here and we kept the tubing right away from the lift holes. That's where the feet of the lift is going to go. We don't want to hit the tubing, so we just snaked out around it. We don't cross the tubing. And when you're tying these, this tubing on the end, tie it back like here and here, but don't tie it up here because that, that's a good way to kink it. If you tie it there and you pull the line too sharp, it'll kink the line. So that's how we do radiant heat right there. We've been doing it that way for, we probably did 50, 60 of these barns like that. Everybody loves the heat, works really good. We've had people hook wood boilers up to them. Um, we've had um, water heaters, tank water heaters that are propane or natural gas fired. We've had indirect water heaters that people have hooked up to this. Works real good.